Hello gems, Leah from Red Emerald Yoga. Today we are here with a full moon in Aries spread. So today we're gonna to be looking at where we would benefit from being a little more fearless, how we can release our stress and frustrations in a more constructive way, which battle is it time to walk away from, and where we could benefit from being a little more selfish, putting ourselves first. What do we need to release in order to feel strong? And how we can be more compassionate towards others. We will also be pulling from Yasmin Boland's Moonology Messages Oracle deck. So today we're gonna to be using Secrets of the Witch's Garden. And I did an unboxing with this deck and it was pretty popular. So I know you guys are probably excited for me to finally use this deck in, um, in a reading. So let's see. So for reading number one, you will be this agate stone. For reading number two, you will be, I think this is an agate, I really don't know. You will be the stone. And for reading number three, let's see. Come here. You will be this one. Okay, so go ahead and choose the stone that resonates with you the most and then jump down to the timestamp below and I will see you in your reading. Pile number one, you can just stay put. I'm also gonna put a number one here so that way in case anybody gets lost, you will know which reading we are doing. Okay, pile number one. Let's see, tapping into reading number one's energy. What messages do you need to hear today for your reading? This is for the full moon, full moon in Aries. What does the full moon in Aries have in store for you? Oh, <laughs> okay, let's see. All right. Where would I benefit from being a little more fearless? Ten of swords, don't be so afraid of endings. Don't be so afraid of walking away. I'm really drawn to the way that like this person, the swords are in this person's um, body right here. And you know, it's like she's bleeding, but her blood is nurturing this ground, this poppy. And to me, poppies are like, they remind me of opium. You know, there's a field of it. And to me, it's like all of her heartache, all of her wounds, whatever it is that you went through. That pain, that suffering, you're either going to, you're either going to take that and lessen somebody else's pain and their suffering, or you know what? You learned a very important lesson and you're never going to allow yourself to be put in that position again. You will have learned a very important lesson. Um, it's kind of like that old adage, fool me once, shame on me, or no, <laughs> fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice shame on me. You know, like you're not going to be fooled again. Be fearless. It's okay to let things end. It's okay to let things go. How can I release my stress and frustrations in a more constructive way? Here we have the five of pentacles in the reverse. Hmm. Release my stress and frustrations in a more constructive way. I think, it, I think you might benefit by reconnecting. To me, this really reminds me of a, um, of a church or temple type building. And I feel like reconnecting with your spirituality, whatever it is that you believe in, and um, 
when you're feeling stressed, when you're feeling really frustrated and you can feel these tensions start to boil instead of lashing out, especially with this um, full moon and Aries energy, Aries tend to be like very fiery, ready for battle, you know, ready to, <laughs> ready to charge head on. And just like taking a time out, you know, like meditating on it, really sitting and thinking, like hearing those words to yourself and seeing if that's the way that you really want that message to come across. Which battle is it time to walk away from? I really see that showing up in this card. Like there is something that, that there's an ending and maybe you have to be the one to walk away. Here we have the high priestess reversed. I feel like this battle is not a mystery to you. You already know. And I think that's why this is coming up with the 10 of swords. Like this 10 swords, like it doesn't take 10 swords. You know what I mean? Like that's just overkill. Um, to me, I feel like you already know. You're just not listening. You're like, oh, um, if maybe if I, I don't know. I don't know what your situation is. But I feel like you're, you're pretending and you may be um, maybe trying to gaslight yourself into thinking that things will change. Things will be different. Um, this is not a mystery. This is something that has been weighing very heavily on your mind. This may even be coming from friends and family members like you totally know. Where could I benefit from being a little more selfish? Where do you need to put yourself first? Pile one. Five of wands in the reverse. Hmm. This is a conflict card and in the reverse, I feel like it's, um, it's an internal conflict. What are you, what kind of things are you telling yourself? What kind of conversations are you having with yourself? I'm wondering if you're afraid, if you're afraid of walking away from drama. Like you're just kind of like stuck in the same rut that you've always been in knowing like you don't want to be there, but you're like, how do I get away? Like, how do I walk away? I feel like just kind of like it's stuck in a cycle. It's stuck in a loop. Drama cycle. I feel like it's okay to put yourself first. It's okay to walk away. If something is not serving your greater good. If it's not serving, um, if it's not helping you be the person that you want to be, it's okay to walk away. It's okay to decline an invitation. Um, where it always ends up just like, you know, bickering or like at each other's throats, nitpicking. Um, that could be friends, family members, coworkers, but I really don't see it as a productive time. So yeah, could be a relationship, but it is time to put yourself first. What do you need to release in order to feel strong? Ten of Pentacles. Oh man, this is like, do you need to release? Um, are you are you hanging on to these situations, to these people, um, because it's comfortable? Because like, because of money, because of um, like social status. Are you hanging on only because it's family? Those are questions that you're going to have to answer for yourself, but why are you hanging on or are you overextending yourself with your family? That could be blood family or that could be the, the people in your closest inner circle that you consider family. I feel like you need to release a little bit of that in order to, in order to stand on your own two feet. You need to be a little bit more independent. How can I be more compassionate towards others? Here we have the magician. The magician has all the tools to manifest the world that she wants to live in. She can counter any attack that comes at her using her tools. And I feel like this card is saying, you already have the tools to be compassionate towards others. You just have to give it a try. And I feel like maybe that's like stuck in the drama, like in this drama cycle. 
you know, here with card number two, how can I release my stress and frustrations in a more constructive way? Thinking about, thinking about what you're going to say before you open up your mouth and say something that brings you back into this drama cycle. It all starts with you. You have the tools. You already have the, the, um, you already have what it takes. I'm not saying it's easy. Sometimes you may really want to say something to somebody, but like, is it really productive? You know, is it needed? More times than not, the answer is no. It's not necessary. It's not necessary to always prove your point. Sometimes it's okay to walk away. Let's see what the Oracle has to say. Let's see which card comes up for you, pile one. Focus, moonbeams. Okay, I'm gonna go to the book and let's see what this says. And then I will tell you how I believe it ties into your reading. Moonbeams, page 52. Focus. Having big dreams is a wonderful thing, but drawing this card suggests you need to get more serious and focused when it comes to making your dreams come true. To paraphrase Thomas Edison, success is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. You are very much on the right track, but you need to hone your vision. Where should you begin? If you've been comparing yourself to other people, this card is a strong reminder that comparison is the thief of joy. Oh my gosh, I did think that you were telling yourself some negative thoughts. That very well could be true for you, Pile One. You can only go at your own pace. If someone or something is causing you to be distracted from your sole purpose, this is the time to turn down the noise. You're being asked to make a bigger effort in terms of moving toward your goal. That may include having greater self-discipline and restraint. Also remember that success is very rarely linear. Even if you feel as though you're going round in circles, you're still inching toward your goals but you don't need to stay very focused right now. This card comes as a reminder not to judge yourself or others too harshly. Yeah, I really felt that with, um, with this card here. And uh, like, not for everybody, like, but for some of you, yeah, I, I do feel like this. Um, this card comes as a reminder that success takes time to focus on the positive and take time out if you need it. This card is an encouragement to meditate when needed. I really felt like that was coming up with this card here, connecting with your own spirituality before you speak and say something that you may regret later. Here we have this card and it has these moonbeams coming out. It's a combination of yin and yang, the yin being the soft moonlight, which comes from the yang, the sun's harsher light. I feel like this is really a, um, really a nod to connecting with your feminine energy right now. If you feel a little bit too much yang, like with it, like if you're feeling like that Aries energy on overdrive, especially <laughs> on the full moon, um, you know, it, it, it lasts a little bit a little bit longer after the full moon. You might be still really feeling the effects 24 hours, 48 hours after the full moon. It still may be on overdrive tensions, kind of like, er, you want you to charge and attack. <laughs> you know, um, Aries love, love having um, something to fight for. You know, like, what do you believe in? What do you want to fight for? Maybe if you're like, if you want to redirect your energy, that would be really beneficial for you. Find something worth fighting for instead of just like sitting here with little squabbles, telling yourself bad things, running around, wasting your time on people that really don't care, on issues that don't matter. 
you know, and if things are over, just, just let it, let it be. You don't have to win all the battles. Okay. Normally I, I was expecting a card to show up like where you're weak, but your weakness is actually um, that you're strong, you know, and you're, you don't want to appear to be weak. So you're like, no, I have to keep fighting for this. I can't let go. I can't give up. I can't quit. And this card is like, you know what? You, you can back off on that a little bit more. So for your reading, I think you need to embrace a little bit more of the yin energy. Aries is a fire sign. And this reading is like a nod, like, you know what? You might be experiencing a little bit too much fire energy right now. You might need to embrace some of the yin. So pile one, this does conclude your reading. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you did and leave a comment below letting me know which card was your favorite and if this reading resonated with you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Bye. Hello, reading number two. If you have selected, oops, <laughs> I'm chasing it over here. If you have selected this stone for your reading, this reading is for you. <laughs> All right, let's get into your reading. Reading number two. Let's see what comes up for you today. What messages does reading pile number two need to hear? doing a pile but I'm so used to calling it a pile it's kind of a hard habit to break let's see okay give it one more oh my goodness Marley's really excited for your reading. She wants to know what's going to come up. Okay, card number one. Where would I benefit from being a little more fearless? King of Swords. Your decision making. Making informed decisions. For me, it's like all about inner wisdom trusting in yourself to make the right decisions, being fair, speaking clearly, knowing what you want to say and communicating that in a way that people not only understand, but that they are receptive to you. Not being afraid to speak what's on your mind, not being afraid of um, people judging you or um, what they're gonna think or what are they gonna say, just, just being able to communicate. This might even be, um, for some of you, this might be like um, business proposals. I think it's more like, it doesn't have to be business proposals. I'm, I'm more inclined to like think like this would be like, yeah, for, uh, yeah, it is. For some of you, it is business proposal. For some of you, this could be like education, going back to school. But for the majority, I want to say that this is just like being able to speak your mind without worry, without doubting yourself. Do we have any writers in the house? Um, I'm think I, I'm really strongly hearing a book being like a book page being flipped, like, like pages, like, like pages. So if you are a writer and you are hesitating um, writing down or like you have some sort of writer's block um, or maybe you're afraid you don't know how this message is going to be received I feel like this card is saying go for it stopping such a chicken and start writing you can edit it later card two how can I release my stress and frustrations in a more constructive way Knight of Wands. <laughs> How can I release my stress and frustrations in a more constructive way? Um, the Knight of Wands. This this card reminds me of a particular person from my real world life. Um, this person is, excuse me, this person is very young, very vibrant. He's a strong, charismatic guy, and he's um. He's very fit. I feel like 
when you get frustrated, when you get angry, instead of just like lashing out and being ready for battle, <laughs> um, what do knights do? They don't only fight. They do a lot of training. They do a lot of um, practicing hand-to-hand -hand combat. They're working on their physical fitness. I feel like physical exertion of some sort may be a good way for you to release some of your stress and your frustration in a more constructive way. Now, if um, some of you, you may have physical capability issues, that's fine. Do what you can. Find a hobby, something to transmute that negative energy, that rage, that kind of like, Arr! into something positive. Okay, you're gonna have to do something that you are passionate about before you open your mouth and say something that you regret. Which battle is it time to walk away from? Queen of Pentacles. Hmm. Pile two. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, for me, the Queen of Pentacles has a very motherly vibe. She likes to nurture and take care of others. I don't know um, if you are having issues with your mother, you might need to distance yourself from your mom right now. Um, I don't know if that is momentarily or more long term. That is for you to to decide and be the judge of. This can also be the Queen of Pentacles. She's very beautiful. She loves being surrounded by fine, beautiful things, and she. Um, I'm wondering if for some of you, you may be falling a little bit too much into like the me parade. If that, if that is the case for you, then I would take that as a nod to back off and to, to divert some of that attention, some of that energy towards the ones you love. Okay. The queen of, the queen of pentacles, she's a nurturer. She's also like the ideal working parent. Um, she's, she's got a great home work balance and, um, yeah, she doesn't, she's not like burning the midnight oil, neglecting her family while she's, you know, so focused on work. She's very present. She's very grounded. For This, this is really awkward. So for some of you, um, I may feel, I, I, I do feel, <laughs> for some of you, I do feel like there are certain causes that you have, have taken on um, or like, kind of stood behind and you're kind of starting to have second thoughts about those. And, um, I think it's really, uh, if you are having doubts about some of the causes that you have kind of championed behind, um, then it's a really good time to take a good look at those and see if that is really, um, really what you want to be nurturing. Card four, could I benefit from a little more, oh, I'm sorry. Card four, where could I benefit from being a little more selfish? Putting myself first. Six of pentacles. Are you giving away more than you're receiving? Six of pentacles in the reverse. Hmm. Okay, um, this could be financial, this could be your time, your energy, um, things of that nature. It does not have to be financial, but I feel like you're giving a lot and you're not taking time to refill your cup. Or the people that you're giving to are kind of putting you in the position where you're starting to resent it a little bit, but you now do not know how to cut that off or you don't know how to set a clear boundary. And you're starting to feel a little drained energetically. This card is a nod to take some time out to figure out what you're comfortable with. And then set a boundary for yourself. Practice saying no. What do I need to release in order to feel strong? Queen of Swords in the reverse.
What do I need to release in order to feel strong? How are you speaking to people? Are you using your big scary voice? Because you think that makes you sound strong, but actually what it's doing is turning people off and your words are falling on deaf ears. Your children are not listening. Your partner is just like completely deaf to what it is that you're saying. Your friends are kind of distancing yourself. Um, at work, people aren't really listening to you. Is it the tone of voice? Is it the words that you're using? Is it um, the way that your message is being delivered? Like, what is it that... What is it that you are saying and how are you saying it that is coming across so wrong? I feel like when you figure this out, when you, when you learn how to deliver, oh my gosh. Are you becoming overly emotional with your words? How are these two cards playing together? I feel like you're really having some issues with your throat chakra. You, you are experiencing difficulties relaying your message. Um, there's a block somewhere. You need to tell people how you feel. I feel like you are not clearly communicating the way that you feel to people. You may be coming across in a way that is... Um, that is being perceived as cold and uncaring. But I feel like you do care. You just don't know how, you just don't know how to convey that. I feel like you need to let that go. You need to figure out how to, how to communicate your emotions. And I feel like that's where you're scared. You're afraid to show people how you really feel. Yeah. How can I be more compassionate towards others? Two of pentacles in the reverse. I feel in your, in your dealings with people. Um, when you give to people, is it because you want to be seen in a certain light. You want to make that social media post. You want to give um, in front of other people so other people can be like, oh, pile two person. Wow, that was so nice. Oh, yeah, pile two person. I, I saw them buy this for that person or they took this person here. Um, why are you why are you extending? Are you doing it out of the kindness of your heart or are you doing it because you want to be seen doing it. I'm really drawn to the to the leaf on her on her chest. I feel like when you do things, you should do it with a light heart, without expectations. Um but I also feel like you're overextending at the same time. Like, are you overextending because of the way that you want people to see you? Are you trying to be somebody you're not? Are you doing that because you don't want people to see how you, how you really feel your emotions and you're hiding that? You're hiding that behind these gestures. Hmm. That's something you're going to have to journal on. Let's see. Let's draw an oracle card for you. Let's see what comes up. What message is meant for you today? What message does pile two need? <laughs> what message does pile two need? Okay, here we go. Oh my goodness. This card literally was like, this card, this deck is kind of sticky. 
Um, it hasn't fully broken in, but <laughs> that's like as big of a jumper <laughs> as I get. And this card is literally process your feelings. Howl at the moon. I don't know if you're a moon howler or not, but I am. <laughs> I have dogs, so it makes it a little bit easier. Um, we'll, we'll howl at the moon with our dogs, but we have these little wiener dogs. <laughs> I live in a condo and we we still howl at the moon. And um, granted, it would be a little bit more awkward. My neighbors already think I'm batshit crazy. But um, if I didn't have dogs, they would probably think I was even more insane. <laughs> but we also go to the beach and like when we're at the beach, um, we'll have we'll have these like moon howling sessions and it's pretty fun. Um, our friends seem to really really love that. So. Yeah, I definitely, um, I'm definitely on board with that howl at the moon for sure. I love it. It clear, it clears your throat chakra too. And I'm really drawn to like how much blue is in these cards and blue is associated with the throat chakra, the throat chakra. Um, the word for the throat chakra is Vishuddha and in Sanskrit, I'm going off on a tangent here, but bear with me. I do that sometimes. Vishuddha in Sanskrit, it means purity. So one of the ways that you can help to balance your throat chakra would be by um, really, really paying attention to what you put into your energy center of the throat chakra. And how do we put stuff into our energies, into our energy center? We do that by um, the words we speak, what we're listening to, what we're watching on TV, what kind of books we're reading. Um, all of that stuff gets processed by the throat chakra. So really monitoring that. And um, I do think some journaling of your feelings would be in order. Let's go to the book and um, let me see what that says. Process. Oh, no, it's Howl at the Moon. Okay, I'm looking at the wrong word. Howl at the Moon, page 50. The practice of moonology involves, at the very least, processing your feelings at full moon and again at dark moon. How are you doing that? Drawing this card suggests you have some feelings you need to release for your own good, as well as for the good of anyone else involved in the situation. Now is the time to let your feelings show too. Bottling them up so that no one knows how you really feel isn't healthy. Obviously, if you're doing that, stop. Consider working on your throat chakra with chanting, breath work, or singing. Literally go out and howl at the moon. You're not at the end of this story yet, so this card can't tell you what the end will be. It's up to you to create it. But part of that journey toward your answer involves you releasing your throat chakra and expressing yourself. If the situation or your life feels blocked now, Processing your feelings could be the key to unblocking. Feel them and deal with them. Negativity blocks your powers. Don't insist on having everything your way. This card also comes as a suggestion that music will be healing to you. I strongly agree with that. Um, if the kind of music that you are listening to is healing music. Um, if you're listening to negativity, if you're listening to the same sad songs on the radio, well, that's still focusing on the negative. Making sure that the, the music is um, positive. It's in the positive form. Talk to a counselor if you need to. Do shadow work. Face your fears. Yeah, so I was already kind of talking about most of what this card was talking about. But if you are interested, I do chocolate therapeutics. I am available for appointments. So you can message me through my website, redemeraldyoga.com to inquire more about that. Or if you know that's what you would like to do, you can just go on to my website and book an appointment today. So pile two, this does conclude your reading. And I hope that it made sense to you. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope this brings you some peace gives you some steps in the right direction on how to bring balance to your throat chakra and make it through this full moon phase. If you enjoyed this reading, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below letting me know which was your favorite card. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Truly my pleasure. See you soon. Bye.
Hello, pile three. If you have selected this stone, this reading is for you. Oops, let's change this. We are now on reading number three. Okay, so yeah, this is your reading. Okay, let's go ahead and shuffle these cards and see which messages you are meant to hear today. What message does reading number three need to hear today for this Aries full moon reading? Okay, card number one, where would I benefit from being a little more fearless? Five of pentacles. I feel, pile three, that you are afraid of having less, afraid of going without, afraid of not having what everyone else has. I feel like this reading is suggesting that it's okay if you don't have what everyone else has. You don't have to live in everyone's storybook. That right now is the time to do what is best for you in your situation and not to worry about what other people have. If you are in a place, pile three person, where you need to ask for help, then that's okay. It's not shameful. Um, it doesn't make you a bad person. It just means, you know what, you're a person who needs a little bit of a help of a helping hand right now, and that's okay. Card two, how can I release my stress and frustrations in a more constructive way? Nine of Pentacles in the reverse. This is a card of abundance, and I'm really drawn to how this card is coming up right after the Five of Pentacles. I'm wondering if you have a lot of stress and frustration surrounding a loss of possessions. That could be a loss of a job. That could be um, having to change house. That could be um, some sort of financial setback, um, some event that occurred in your life that that really took you from what you were comfortable with into a place of something that you are not comfortable. Maybe you've never been in this position before. Uh, maybe you have, I, I really don't know, especially being a collective reading. Um, I feel like this card is calling on you to, to recognize and be grateful for what you do have in your life. What blessings do you have? Whether that is physical possessions, that could be people in your life, your friends, your family, memories, maybe you've experienced things that other people have not. Um, being grateful for that. I feel like this card is calling on you to, to really take a deep look at what makes you beautiful? What good qualities do you have? Um, what makes you a good person? Do some journaling on that. What qualities do you possess? What skills do you have that you can draw upon to bring you out of this place of having less? And still taking the time for self-care. Now that doesn't mean that you have to go to the nail salon or to the beauty parlor and get your facial, get a, a manicure, um, whatever, you know, you don't have to go and get a massage at a place. Like if you can't afford it, then you just can't afford it, but you can still do little things 
that make you feel good. You can take five minutes, 10 minutes out of your day and do some sort of um, meditation. You know, you can do some sort of breathing exercise. You can do some sort of physical activity that makes you feel good. There's something that you can do to make yourself feel good. That could be as simple as taking a bath, seeing a beautiful flower and stopping and, and smelling the flower, you know, um, depending on your own personal take on that. I'm going to say both because this is a collective reading, you know, just admiring the flower from afar. Or even if it's like, if you can't buy a flower for yourself, plucking that flower. Now, if there's only one flower, then I would say <laughs> leave it there. But if there's a, like an abundance of flowers, then maybe, you know, maybe that day you need to pluck the flower and you need to put it where you're going to see it to remind yourself of something beautiful, then yeah, I say go for that. If it's, <laughs> as long as it's not going to get you in any legal trouble, I don't know where you are, but yeah, as long as it's not going to get you into trouble. Which battle is it time to walk away from? Death. I feel like something is over and it is time to move on. And I very well feel like it's um, a way of living. You know, this child is not afraid of death. She offers it a pumpkin. She welcomes it. I don't think this is a literal death. Um, I think this is like a metaphysical death. This is a transformation of who you once were into the person that you're becoming. Who are you becoming? You can't cling to the old way, the way that things used to be. You have to embrace the situation that you find yourself in now. You have to become the best version of yourself today that you can be. Where could I benefit from being a little more selfish, from putting myself first? The devil. Okay, um, this I think this would be a pleasure of the flesh. And the card is saying, you know what? You need to embrace that. Like what makes you feel sexy? Doing it with a bit of restraint, not overindulging, but yeah, like you can indulge, you know, like at a, depending on your situation, if you have a problem with this, then obviously I'm not, this, this part of the reading does not apply to you. You know, this is a collective reading. So take what resonates and leave the rest. But for some of you, it's okay for you to have like a little bit of alcohol, you know, like a little bit is, is okay. That's a pleasure too much is a problem, you know, so if you're okay with that, then maybe having a drink or two, you know, um, if it's legal in your area, maybe indulging in a little bit of herbal refreshments, maybe it's, um, maybe it's telling your partner, you know, like some new thing that you want to do in bed. Um, I, but I do feel like this is pleasures of the flesh. Card five, what do I need to release in order to feel strong? The lovers. Oh my gosh. Okay, pile three. I'm going to retract what I just said. I'm thinking that um, this 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 hardship that you find yourself in that it may be tied to a romantic partner, or maybe your partner is being a little too demanding of you, making you do things that you are, you are not really comfortable with. Um, you're gonna need to break free of that because the very next card, what do I need to release in order to feel strong is the lover's card. Normally, um, for me personally, I look at the lover's card like more like a balance between the masculine and the feminine energies, the yin and the yang. Well, yes, it does in some readings, um, take on like the literal romantic sense for me, but more times um, than not, it reminds me of like striking a balance, decision making. But in this reading, I'm strongly feeling like it's a relationship. Like this would be a romantic partner. And maybe that's why the death card is coming up. It is time to walk away. Put yourself first. And to release this unhealthy attachment with this person. 
Now, I just want to point out that this, this does not have to be a romantic relationship with the person. This very well could be a boss. It could be a friendship. It could be, you know what I mean? It could be um, a certain family member. It does not have to be a romantic relationship, but I feel like it is a strong connection with a person. How can I be more compassionate towards others? Five of Swords. Oh my gosh. Don't let past experiences make you cold and bitter. Don't shut yourself off from love. Don't lash out on the people who have had nothing to do with your heartbreaks with your hurts. I feel like living like that will only leave you feeling cold and shut off that you'll have a lot of regrets if you choose to live. Um, if you choose to live a life where you don't have compassion towards others. Let's go to the Oracle deck and see what message you need to hear pile three. What message does pile three need to hear? Still needs a little bit more of a shuffle. Follow the moon, watch for signs. I love it. All these butterflies. I really feel like there's like a transformation in store for you. Let's go to the book and see what it has to say about this card. Follow the moon. Page 44. Watch for signs. What is the universe telling you? It's important to learn how to read the signs coming your way. What signs are you being sent? Learning to read the signs is a big step along the spiritual path. They can come in the form of dreams, music, numbers, or patterns. Your life themes are signs of what is going on in your consciousness. There are signs around you, and you need to see them. Alternatively, in the coming 24 hours, ask the universe for a concrete sign of some kind about your questions. For example, ask to see a rainbow or a pink unicorn or whatever feels right to you, and then keep your eyes peeled. There is your answer. This card can come up as a sign to change your behavior or your focus. Pay attention. The signs are everywhere. What are you seeing? This card can also be a gentle reminder to get back into healthy routines that will help your life to tick over more smoothly. Meditation will help you. This card is also a call to open your eyes. The way, pay attention to the way that people do things. The way someone does one thing is how they do everything. It's a theory. To listen to your intuition and that a spiritual self-care routine may help you right now. Open up to divine guidance. And I'm really drawn to this card. Normally this card reminds me of needing to reconnect with your spirituality, Re needing to reconnect with source, whatever that means to you. Um, especially when it's in the, re especially when it's in the reverse, but in this reading, I, I'm really not getting that feeling as strongly. I feel like more, um, like in this reading, it's more financial. It's more a card of needing help, but I do feel that, um, 
yeah, connect, connecting with your spirituality and opening up to divine guidance. Meditation, definitely all of that stuff would be of comfort to you right now, would help you to sort through and figure out what step to take next. It says the universe is talking. Are you listening? Yeah. And I'm really drawn to the way that there's like, this looks like a full moon, you know, like it kind of looks like a setting sun. But over here, we just have like this little sliver, you know, and I feel like sometimes the answers that you seek are not instantaneous, you know, like sometimes to really figure out a viable plan, it takes a little while, you know, like it might take you a moon phase to figure out what you're going to do. I feel like you'll, you'll get your sign right away. But like to figure out what step to take next, that might take a little bit of time. And that's okay. The important thing is, is that you don't stay stuck. That you don't stay in a situation where you feel trapped, or like your life force is being sucked out and drained from you. that you don't allow yourself to grow cold and bitter and resentful. So pile three, this does conclude your reading. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment below letting me know which one was your favorite card. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Bye.